Hey there guys, so today I'm going to be talking about trading up, why you should do it, how you should do it, and uh, in what circumstances you should do it. So basically by trading up I just mean, you know, taking something, starting off with something that's worth, you know, say maybe like a hundred bucks, you know, you kind of whittle your way on the marketplace, find those good deals, and then you, you trade up for something worth 200 bucks, and it just doubles 400 bucks, 600 bucks, 1,000, then you get up into the bigger numbers, and then that's when you start seeing some real profit. Now, um, a lot of people, you know, you just, you wonder how, how do you do that? So, I'm going to tell you how I did it, and I'm going to show you what I've worked my way up to now. So basically, how I managed to do that is I started out about three years ago, it was my birthday, and my brother had this Kia Sportage. It had been rolled over, so it was just, it was kind of totaled, but still ran. I drove it around the farm. He gave it to me for my birthday. And I just, on the marketplace, you know, I threw it up for after about a year or so of owning it. I threw it up, and I was like, hey, anybody want to trade anything for this? Uh, I'd be down to trade for, like, Project Quad or something. So this guy wrote me, and he had uh, two Project Quads. They were, what were they? Yamaha 350 quads. And uh, so I got those, messed around on the one. The one ran good. Um, so I messed around on that and rode around a little bit until the tranny went in that. So I took the parts one that it came with and I swapped the diff into it and got it running. And then, you know, it was having a bunch of issues. But, you know, quads are worth more money and they're quite desirable. So I threw those on the marketplace. And uh, after a while, I had a guy with a sled write me, and he wanted to trade for the quads as a project. It was a O2 uh, RMK Vertical Edge 800, so it was a like sled. It was probably worth about fifteen hundred bucks, and uh, so we made that deal sled. And uh, with that sled, you know, I kept that for winter. I broke it. I broke the trailing arm, snapped it in half, took it all apart. You know, I had to replace the mount I broke and welded it back up, put it back together, rode it for a year. And then I ended up old Skidoo Land, 70 sleds, so worth about like 400 bucks. Paid 200 bucks for those sleds. And I traded those for a 03 and 2003 RMK Vertical Escape 800, so pretty much the same sled I had, just a little bit fancier at reverse and a longer track, but it needed a chain case. So I got that and uh, kept that. I ordered the parts for it. The parts arrived, I went to put it together, and there's a bro bolt broken off in the shaft, and you know. So I was like, you know what, I'll just throw this on the marketplace and see what happens. So when I did that, I threw that on the marketplace, on Facebook is what I'm talking about, and to, uh, I live in Canada, so Kijiju is another one I use, and I know, like, you have Craigslist and stuff too. But then I wrote, I messaged a guy with a 2000, what was it, it was a 2002 YZF 426, so pretty much the same thing as a 450, just the one, the model that came before the 450. And uh, he had rebuilt the motor twice, trying to get it working right, and you know, it was just never running right, and he got tired of working on it. So I traded him that sled, because he ran a business that flipped sleds for that bike. I got that bike, you know, messed around with it a little bit, and that bike was having some serious issues, like it ended up just stopping running, and uh, the chain skipped on the teeth that run the valves. So, but that actually, I don't know if it was a non-interference engine or something, but it didn't blow the engine up, basically. It didn't break anything. So I pulled that whole engine apart, took the head off, t took the um, timing chain out, ordered a new timing chain, replaced the timing chain, put it all back together, and it was good to go. It was perfectly rebuilt, good running bike. I rode that all summer, and then, you know, I got bored of it, so... <laughs> I threw it up on the marketplace, ended up having a guy pay 1500 bucks for that. And then later, at the near the end of the summer, I took that 1500 bucks and bought a Project Sled. That was a late 90s Skidoo Summit Racer's Edge Sled. And it was about, what was it? The Racer's Edge Sled was, I paid 1500 cash for it, and it needed drive shaft bearing replaced. So I took it all apart, replaced drive shaft bearing, ended up... What I did is I ended up actually trading that sled now, like last week, for this dirt bike right here, which is a 2007 KXF 450 that needs some work. So I have that, has papers and everything. That was a pretty good deal in my opinion. And then also the red RMK, the Red O2 RMK vertical edge sled I had, I ended up 
later on trading down the road for something over here. But uh, mixed in there, I ended up buying a mid-80s CR125, and it, I managed to get it unseized because it was seized. It had been sitting in someone's yard. I used a razor blade and scraped off the tank and got that, you know, it looked decent. I sold that for 1200 bucks and I didn't pay anything for it. I got it for free. And then, so I took that 1200 bucks and I also had a uh, 200X trike, uh, like a race trike. It was totally clapped out. So I took the 1200 bucks from the CR125, the trike and the Yamaha Blaster, which both ran, but, you know, they both needed work. And I traded those all for a 2006 uh, Honda 450 race quad. And so later on, you know, I rode that quad for the summer. It ended up needing some minor things as well. And so I took the 202 RMK 800 and the TRX, like the 06 race quad. And I traded those both for what's sitting over here, which is a 2013 Pro RMK 800. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It runs good. It's got a 163 track in reverse. So, you know, that that's worth about 4500 bucks. And then this bike, I just ordered plastics and stuff for it. And it's going to be a project on the channel later on. This bike will be worth about, you know, with like 500 bucks of work, I think it'll be worth, you know, 2500 bucks. So, you know, that gets us up to, you know, what does that get us to? Like seven grand worth of stuff. And that's starting from, you know, a free 2000, whatever it was, Kia Sportage that had been rolled. And, you know, this was, you know, none of, none of daddy's money was spent here besides, you know, driving me to go get this stuff, helping me fix it. But, he no, nothing was bought for me. I didn't pay cash for anything. This all came from that Kia Sportage that I got in the beginning. And uh, I also have this TNT 440 here, which is my dad's that I'm doing. I'm doing crank seals on it right now for him to, for some cash for some more money to get this project bike on the way. So that you might see some of that later on here too. But yeah, that's that's what happened. This trike I'm sitting on right now is also something that um, you know was part of one of those trades that was included. So I'm just straight up. I'm just that's that's my story. I'm gonna get into some tips now. Tip one would just be you know don't be afraid to ask people. Don't be afraid to offend them. If you do, I mean, there's nothing they can do about it. Because people ask way too much for stuff a lot of the time on Facebook. So you just, you can't be afraid to lowball somebody. All, you know, you might think, oh, maybe he, he wouldn't want this. But just ask if that person wants to trade. Don't be shy. Just just ask. That's That would be my first tip. Tip two would be to know what you're getting. Know what your abilities are. You know, don't get something that you're going to be way over your head in. Don't give your stuff away for free. Um... You know, always try to get the good deal. I mean, I know that's kind of, that's not like a dick thing to do, but always try to get the good deal. I mean, you can, you, there's always a good deal out there. There are so many options. I mean, I live in a little town and I can find these things locally. So basically, you know, just don't be shy. Find the good deals. Don't like, it, it may take you six months to find the right deal, but when you do find it, it feels good to actually be like moving up in the world instead of, you know, moving backwards. Cause you and I have done that too, and I mean it feels awesome to like if you know someone that needs something and to give them a really good deal on it. Totally do that. I've done that, but always try to you know keep it moving forward and be trading up. Third tip is knowing um, people. You know, like knowing lots of different people, having lots of resources. Uh, you know, knowing where the good deals are, and so yeah, that's always really helpful. Other tip would be you know if you just see something sitting in somebody's yard. Go ask about it. Don't be shy. If you know you see that old skidoo that you've been looking at for years that's just sitting in their lawn rotting away, you know, go ask about it. You know, you'll probably get it for a hundred bucks and if they don't just give it to you. I mean, some people don't, but there's there's no harm in asking. Learning how to fix your own stuff is a very useful skill in the trading up business because, you know, when you get something and you're trading up, there is always a risk to that. You might get ripped off. You might get something that needs a whole bunch of work. But if you don't have to bring that somewhere to pay for it to get fixed and you can just do it yourself, you can save a lot of money doing that. And I would high re highly recommend, you know, if you don't have the skills to learn them. Right, so that's just a few tips and tricks and uh, my story with the machines. Next up, I would like to sort of give you guys a more detailed walk around on my sled, my trike, and my bike here. And, uh, you know, keep you posted on the bike project, maybe the TNT project. And, uh... Just keep you guys updated, and on any future trades I'm doing, I will try to up update you guys on that too. 
Follow me on Instagram at Liam underscore Leslie underscore channel, and I post pictures of all the trades and stuff I do on there. There will also be pictures of the old things I've traded for, like the quad and the old sleds and stuff. There, Those will be on there if you guys want to see. Um, you can see sort of what I was getting into there. But that's just a little how-to video on what you want to do when you're trading up, what you want to look for. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.